everyone, this is Azuki, and today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to set up the Ableton uh, APC40 Mark II controller so that you can do looping with it as you would do on CDJs, where you click a button to start the loop and a button to end the loop, and that kind of sets your quantized loop points in real time. Um, so the first step is to download some Python scripts that I wrote. And I'll throw a link to this GitHub page in the video description and in the Facebook comments and basically wherever this video ends up being posted. Uh, so we're going to go here and just download the zip file. I already downloaded it. So we'll just replace that. Cool. And then now we go to downloads, just unzip it, which I've also already done. Um, and let's just use the one I unzipped earlier. So now we have to put these scripts in a place where Ableton can recognize it as a custom control surface. There's pretty good instructions for how to do this on the Ableton website, um, but it's, uh, it's pretty simple. So on Mac, we just go to Applications, Ableton Live 10, Show Package Contents, uh, click on a bunch of folders, and there's an equivalent um, for how to do this on Windows that you can find here. And go to MIDI Remote Scripts. And uh, once you get here, just uh, copy and paste the folder that you just downloaded from my GitHub. And so um, if you're not familiar with this, uh, this is a folder that Ableton, where Ableton stores um, presets for all the MIDI controllers. So if you have an APC40, um, you know, Ableton comes with this, uh, the Python scripts were already installed, but if you want like custom settings, then you have to, um, either write your own Python scripts or download some that other people wrote and put them in the same folder. And, uh, this is called a custom control surface. So now we can start Ableton as you would normally do. And let's just open up a DJ set. Um, a template. Do, do, do. Cool. And then you go to live preferences. So I already set this to um, my custom script as the control surface, but um, usually like if I hadn't, it would look like this. And then you can just uh, set the control surface to uh, APC 40 Mark II Azuki, but leave, just leave everything else the same. Cool. And as you can see, it's plugged in and lit up, and that means um, the script has loaded without any errors. So now you might say, okay, what are, where are my looping controls? So the way I've mapped this is that um, <clears throat> metronome is loop start, tap tempo is loop end, nudge is uh, nudge minus moves the loop point to the left, and then nudge plus moves the loop point to the right. And all of this is quantized to the nearest bar. Um, maybe some people don't like that. I can change it, but right now it's just hard coded so that everything um, is at like even bar intervals. Do, do, do. Cool. And maybe I can set up my camera somehow so that you can see what's going on here. Cool. So let's just start playing a track. Oh man, that's totally not at the right tempo. Let's set that to like 75. And let's say I want to start at loop point. So you can see it's a loop point there. Let's end the loop. Cool. And so that's our loop there. Uh, we want to move it to the side. Let's move it here. And then yeah, this one moves the loop over to the other side. Uh, so that's pretty much the basic functionality. And now um, to exit the loop, just press loop start, aka metronome again, and that ends the loop. And so now let's say that you want to start a different song. And let's say you want to loop this. And it's pretty much the same. So. As you'll see, like these buttons will just map to looping in whatever the currently highlighted clip is. So if you switch back to this one, 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's just loops this one again. It's pretty simple. Um, let's highlight the one where it's looping. Uh, another thing that I've tried to do is set this up such that you can have and double the loop length. So to do that, you press shift, uh, plus doubles it. And as you can see, it's kind of jumping around, which is why I wouldn't recommend this for performance. I think that's actually an Ableton bug. Um, and then shift minus uh, cuts the loop length in half. So that's pretty much it. Um, I want to say thank you to Will Marshall, who did most of the work for this, although um, I could only find open source scripts that he wrote for Ableton 8, and this works for Ableton 10. Um, I hope this helps people, and if you find it useful, um, throw me a subscribe on YouTube, or whatever the kids say these days. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know in a comment or hit me up. See you guys.